Hello and welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train Jared Freed coming live from the West Village of Manhattan. We got a chit chat Wednesday with Courtney McGinnis. Great episode, great chit chat. She is so funny, and you got to go check out her YouTube special. It, the link to it is in the description of this episode. I love this conversation because it was just two comics gabbing. This is any conversation I would have with any comic backstage, before a show, after a show, in the green room, at the table at the cellar. She is so funny. And I thought the interesting part about this was how much people kind of care about their music and meshing that with a partner. She has a podcast where her and her husband talk about their music choices. And it was funny to me because that is something that is like so low on my list of like what makes me in common with someone I'm dating. And it could be really high on someone else's list. And some people, music is their everything. It's their outlet. It's what they go and you know use all their money towards to go to concerts. And concerts are like another place for them to feel like better mentally. And I'm so far away from that that I think it's interesting to just hear how that works into someone's relationship where it does matter. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see she had some like art in the background that had to do with that. So really fun episode. I want you to check it out. I want you to comment below with the parts you liked, what you didn't like, anything you want to talk about. Uh, I'll definitely be checking the YouTube comments. Uh, but enjoy today's episode. Courtney's fantastic. And make sure you follow her and check out her special. Boom. Welcome to the new J Train podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train Jared Freed coming to you live from the West Village of Manhattan. That's right, every Wednesday it's a Chit Chat Wednesday. Today is no different. Very excited. Today's guest has a special out on YouTube right now. You can watch it, you can live it, you can laugh, at, laugh with it. <laughs> it is called White Noise. Courtney McGinnis, thank you for coming on. Jared, thanks for having me. This is the best. I appreciate you plugging the special, Live, Laugh, Love It. And uh, of course, this is also now all my young cousins think I'm cool because I'm doing a oh, podcast. Re <laughs> really? This is the best. Yeah, I'm hitting it on all cylinders. This well, is great. Shout out to Courtney's young cousins. Thank you for listening and watching, maybe on YouTube or listening. That's that's for that's pretty cool for me. Thank you. That's nice. <laughs> you have the candle lit in the background. You have a very I like the background you're coming from. What explain the green? Explain the hanged paint, the the paintings that are hung up. What what is what room are you coming from? Okay, this is actually my husband and I. My husband is a comic. I'm mm -hmm. a very wealthy, successful woman, That's right. making all the right choices in life. And uh, this is our podcasting room. So we do a music podcast because he likes uh, old man music and I'm cool and young and hot. And so like I like Beyonce, Rihanna. I'm sitting on an NSYNC blanket. You know, I've got candle to keep it sexy but i've got my mariah carey books right next to me just in case i've got britney spears's memoir just in case i need to reference anything you know i had a question about your podcast so the, the podcast is called i love you but your music sucks now yes we get a lot of dating and relationship questions in my life um so the, the podcast uh which everyone should go listen to is you you ba are you going over each other's taste like explain the premise for the podcast okay yes so we fight about music all the time because i truly think it's like dating your dad like he this week on the podcast is swv sisters with voices one of the greatest r&b groups of all time and he brought ambrosia does anyone who listens do you know ambrosia i don't even all of the everything you just said like the two sentences i i am not a music person. Okay, and gotcha. It's a weird thing to say to people because it's like, I do like, I think it's insane to be like, oh, no, this noise <laughs> about any music. Like, that's not what I mean. It's like a hard thing to explain. I hope it, you understand. Like, I hope people understand sure. it when I say it, you know? Yeah. It's like, if it, at first you're like, oh, Jared doesn't like uh, Joy, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I have music that I've listened to. I guess I've never taken, this was kind of the, what I was going to ask you about because I've never like cared about music. Like if someone showed me their music, I'd be like, cool, let me check <laughs> this out. Like I wouldn't be like, right. I guess my but judgment of them. A, were you not a TRL kid? Of course I was. But to me, TRL, like 
was more about the stuff going on. The pop culture. Right. And like who came on. The music was like kind of like like I'm I'm probably the reason TRL played 10 seconds of a song and not the full song. (laughs) You know what I mean? They look at their test group. Right. They're like, no, no, no. They want Carson interviewing someone who's in a new relationship. Like I'm more interested in that. Right. And it is a show I would watch all the time. I remember. But it was like. That was kind of how you kept up with what was going on, like the water cooler that, conversation at the that middle was, school. That was our TikTok, right? That was right. like anything you had to know happened right there <laughs> in Times Square. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, like, when you were dating, was someone's music taste important to you? Yeah. Well, okay, that's not exactly true because I um, – <clears throat> have dated multiple white rappers. <laughs> that white is, rappers. Uh, yeah, babe. Um, multiple. How do you multiple. even? Multiple. I don't think I've met one white rapper. I don't know if I've met many rappers generally. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a beautiful place called Virginia, and okay. uh, I grew up right outside of D.C. So it was a very diverse area, but also. Uh, a lot of white people and uh yeah i just i don't know how this happened i worshipped eminem when he came out i'm sure you uh, remember when eminem came out he was like the coolest it was so i was like that's everything i like and uh then i just like um in high school i dated two like what this is before soundcloud these were just like guys freestyling and like trying to act like they were going to get an album together it's so embarrassing i guess it makes some sense if i'm to think about you like music these people are musically inclined they're like but i'm also i love rap i've chosen rap as the direction for what i'm gonna do i and (laughs) again if eminem's in the air they're like oh that's a that's something i can do now i yeah i I mean it was 2004 right you know, come on <laughs> but yeah and then i dated another one when i moved to new york i was like how does this keep happening to me you know what were the uh, raps about oh i am not joking i i used to say this as a joke but one of the guys i dated in high school i swear to god he could never like because my name's courtney mm-hmm. and i swear to god he could never rhyme anything with courtney and that's like <laughs> <laughs> swear to god his... that is part of the reason we didn't work this is like the, his his white whale. This is his, you know, the Captain Ahab. This is. We're gonna get it. <laughs> I'm never gonna get a Courtney rhymes with, you know, uh, support me. I don't support know, like, <laughs> like support me. I don't know. That's the only thing I can. <laughs> I, I, it was yeah. so stupid. I was like, we were in the suburbs. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? That I don't know. It's just, you know, uh, back then it it was so much less about authenticity. You know, uh, white right. rappers I, well, now. That's but, why they rap about pills and stuff because they're like, that's what I do. <laughs> right. I guess you know, there's a little bit of an innocence though. Like, you know, I kind of like envy that. Like, I don't know who out there is like talking shit about me before I even get to do the thing that I really want to do. Like, you know, if a young kid wants to rap, you go, good for you. You you know, nowadays I would assume, you know, a white kid in the suburbs would be like, hey, I really want to rap. And then he'll go on TikTok and then suddenly his algorithm is all people like making fun of someone who tried to rap. And they're like, yeah, I'm out. I'm not doing that. I'm you know, I. I, yeah. I kind of feel bad for that kid. Like you got to go through <laughs> shit to get where you're going. You know, it's like, true. do you and try the- anything nowadays when you're at that age? I don't know. It's, it's and there's I, like I, a million other people doing it on your feed too. And that's like in its own, I'm, you know, with comedy, it's like that in itself is like, a uh, um, kind of like oh well why even try that like with the special i was like "Eh, it feels like everyone's doing a special but it's like no you just gotta put yourself out there you know but Mm -hmm. it's so true back then it was like they were just freestyling and it was like a uh, i don't know i mean they were uh, all a mess but (laughs) and uh they all sold weed and they all you know it's like they all weren't like you know but uh yeah there was an innocence and like a sweetness to it i was like i'm just being creative with my boys right i so the music (laughs) stuff so when so your husband has this taste that you don't enjoy like yes and you both seem to care about music so like i guess like it's like who controls the radio? Is that kind of what this argument's over? Who controls the playlist, the aux Listen, cord? 
you are very familiar with the comedian lifestyle. We mm. sit in a car for hours a lot. Like mm -hmm. we travel right. a lot. We are not successful. We're driving to upstate New York for a one nighter, baby. We are in the yeah. car for like six hours and it became such a thing and such like, cause like uh, we have all the same taste in music. I'm um, sorry, music, nah, movies and shows and comedy. We have the same type of, funny thing and uh it was just like oh my god every time we get in the car we're pissed off at each other and so and you know like uh what a stupid thing to argue about but it is you're right like it's something we both love so much and we actually did couples therapy and sort of the whole uh thing i think at least for us like when we did couples therapy it was like learning how to fight correctly Okay. And so I feel You're like, like... Well, he's like, well, I enjoy Van Halen. <laughs> exactly that. And oh. what do you enjoy? Like, are, is I'm that how these arguments are? I'm you like are... Van Halen. I, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was so fucking embarrassing. But uh, some people yeah. are coming in with their cheating problems. You guys are like, um, Britney yeah. Spears' early stuff is something really I will good. give a shot to. You know, like, is <laughs> that like. I wish I was joking about this. <laughs> like it's so <laughs> stupid, and that's why we started the podcast. Okay, so also in on the pod, we actually like give the history of the band. So like we okay. do a little, like we'll each do like twenty thirty minutes on like the band because I feel like it. When you learn about others, it makes you so like you, appreciate it. So you're trying to sell each other yes. on like, and and yes. maybe if you knew the upbringing of Rihanna, you would enjoy what she's I singing mean, about even more. What she's overcome, she's right. from the islands, baby. If you knew about you know? the Eagles so, and yeah, oh the Eagles, know, like, that's that's a big one in the house. He <laughs> loves the Eagles. <laughs> So he's like a yacht rock guy, and you're like oh. an early 2000s pop princess of sorts. Period. I mean, yeah. he, I don't know if you can see behind me. There is a velvet painting of Bruce Springsteen as well. Um, so he's a Bruce, but mostly yacht rock, yes. See, it's, it's funny. Like, um, Yeah, I just have never thought. I guess food taste would matter to me. Like, But, yeah. I, but music taste, I mean, I dated someone who was a really big... Um, they were like a deadhead type, you know, like really? festival type. And, you know, that became, you know, more like the, what's it called? The um, Dead & Co. has yeah, now yeah. gone a little yeah. bit more mainstream. And, you know, I always, obviously, I had the pre-existing, you know, biases towards the the funkadelic music type. I don't even know yeah. if funkadelic is right, but like the fish person. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I had like the a jam trope bands. in mind. Yeah, the jam yeah. band types. And then the more they introduced me to the world, I was like, oh, I get it. Like, this makes sense. And it was like a connection to like, you know, the, you know, especially with jam band, like there's a connection to like parents a lot of times. Like, sure. you, know, the, you know, the father, the mother's yeah. into it. So and then I ended up going to um, like New Year's Eve fish at MSG on New Year's Eve. And it was it was really fun. I enjoyed it. But like I didn't walk away like there was a couple songs. I was like, ah, I know that one. But like yeah, I didn't walk yeah. away with like this like. Okay, throw on that playlist. I don't know. Like it wasn't like right, but maybe right, that's my right. care of music generally. Like I don't think I would do that if I at right. any band I attended. I don't know. I I, I kind of feel bad about they whenever I say it, I'm not into music, I feel like people look at me like I just said I'm not into dogs and they're just like assuming <laughs> that I'm like some crazy person. So I I mean, it's like, it's totally fine. I totally get it when people like to me, oh, first of all, I went to a, I went to a New Year's Eve fish show, by the way. What did you think? Uh, okay. So the week before, actually days before I went to Mariah Carey's Christmas show oh, wow. and, uh, different which I, crowds. different crowd <laughs> <laughs> and like people were like, Listen, I love my community, but people were like cutting each other in line and being bitchy. <laughs> like everybody was like side eyeing and it was a Mariah Carey crowd. You know, that's our queen. Oh, that's interesting. The, the last living diva. And then I go to this fish show. We saw a bunch of comics. I was mm -hmm. tripping. I was like, I did feel like I was definitely high on drugs. Thank mm -hmm. you. But I did feel like. Oh, I've got a secret. To the cousins, to I, Courtney's cousins out there, she yeah, means yeah. she had I mean, ate too uh, much or something. Just <laughs> weed. It's totally normal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I felt like I had this secret, like, oh, they're going to find out I'm not one of them. But it was like, 
everyone was so kind people were buying us beers they were like this is your first show man that's beautiful ultra inclusive i i i felt that as well at the and that's funny because it's almost you take on you know mariah carey there is this notion that like i'm the diva now like i'm having my big night out i'm gonna get dressed up this is this is and then every group kind of turns into their own mariah which turns into kind of elbowing people out of the way to make sure the spotlight is on you. You know, like right. I can understand that. That kind of goes with the lore a little the bit. The energy. But, right, yeah. the energy. Um, that is interesting. I don't know. Hold but on. I Before hated we... the music. Hated it. You, I hated you, it. You, you couldn't do it. I just, I don't, it's not, I love R&B. I, when R&B meets pop, it feeds my soul. So like all that jammy, long, fuck it. I was just like, cool. I don't know how to dance to this. What do you, you think know? of the new, before we, uh, I'm going to ask you what you think of the new kind of era of pop women that are out there. But before we do, Hero Bread is sponsoring this podcast. I love Hero Bread because basically you want to eat bread and you want to eat bread as efficiently as possible. So <laughs> You, would you take a piece of bread that has the regular amount of carbs, calories, and fiber, or would you take one with zero grams of sugar, high in fiber, zero to one net uh, grams of net carbs? You know, really what you want is the crunch sometimes, just the feeling of bread. And I'm just, and beyond that, Hero Bread's delicious. You're going to love it. You're not even going to tell the difference between Hero Bread and the regular bread. But they have they have all the different kinds, too. Croissants, um, they have... You know, sandwich bread, tortillas, like just every type of bread. If you want a carb, Hero Bread's the place. And Hero Bread is offering 10% off your order uh, of their new recipe. Go to herobread.co. Go to hero.co. Use code JTRAIN at checkout. That's hero.co. Code JTRAIN at checkout. That's 10% off your order when you use the code JTRAIN at H E R O dot C O. So go check out all, every ad, the description. Um, you can go in the description of the episode and find all the promo codes and stuff. MeUndies as well. Love MeUndies. Here's the thing. You, listener or viewer on YouTube, you are not good to yourself. You have a pair of underwear that you're dealing with. You use it on laundry day. That is, that is, this is me telling you, take your laundry day underwear, throw it in the garbage, and buy a new pair from MeUndies. That's it. Now you're going to have front of the rotation underwear at the back of the rotation. So I think that's just a no-brainer. They also have lounge pants that I own, wear, and love. So go kick off lounge season with MeUndies and get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash feather. Promo code feather. That's MeUndies.com slash feather. Code feather for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies comfort from the outside in. So we have three sponsors. One was a pre-roll, and then there was Hero Bread as well as MeUndies. We are done with sponsors. All of those are in the description of this episode. Um, so I just did an episode with Nora Princiati, who is from The Ringer. She does a podcast called Every um, Every Album. Uh, it's like a Taylor Swift show. We were talking about these new kind of Taylor Swift, you know, Chappelle Roan, uh, I don't know, I, I always mess up the names, Charlie. XEX. XEX, and um, we we're talking about uh, Sabrina, Sabrina Carpenter. yes. These are kind of like, you know, we kind of had a break from these kind of pop people. Now they're kind of coming back. I, you know, Charlie XEX, I was saying to Nora, her concerts just look like the best time ever. Like, I, I just saw the one from Miami on TikTok, and I'm like, Oh my God, like I'm sitting here, 39 year old man who shouldn't even like go near that concert, like might get taken away as some sort of predator. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I have to go. Like, I just have to see her do this song. You know, like what, what do you think of this new era? I am so obsessed with it. And when I tell you, if you want to go to a Charlie XCX concert, <laughs> I go. will go with you. And I'll be like, guys, he's cool. I swear. <laughs> Don't I swear worry, guys. Cool. Nothing weird Let about him this. In. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Just a totally normal dude. <laughs> yeah. What do you think I, of that? Oh, you... I, I, it makes me so happy. I truly have chills. That's so embarrassing. It makes <laughs> me so happy because I think pop music got shit on for so long. There's an mm. art to pop music. And like for so long, it was like 
no one did choreography and it was like I don't know it was just this resurgence is making me so so happy I, I'm so thrilled by it I love all of them everyone you named I absolutely love what do you um, think it is what do you think brings pop back oh. Honestly, maybe the darkness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that, like everything feels shitty and I think it's an escape. Pop has always mm. been an escape to me. Like you remember speaking of TRL, like uh uh in we thought the world was going to end in 2000 right. and a, a, every music video was like we're in space. It'll be okay. We'll just go to right. space where everything will be <laughs> fine. I think, I think it's escape because pop also the concerts of pop you know and of course like post covid every like everyone's gone so much further into performance too because it's mm. like oh we all get to be together and stuff so everyone's like upping their game uh for concerts and people are going to concerts um yeah i think it's just the escape to be honest and yeah. and uh Go yeah, ahead, we were sorry. in a we, no, we were in like a drought, uh, um, uh, a drought, and everything was electronic or rap or, and now it's just like pure pop. These girls can sing. Uh, right, I was uh, like H O T O T O G O O G O. Yeah, I was right. like listening to that, and I was like, what? And I'm like, man, this is just such like a fun song, and it also yeah. like it's so like kind of meaningless, you know? Like yes. I was like, it just was like total candy you know and yeah, i was like who gives a shit right and i'm <laughs> like, like life it's such sucks a, right it was such a weird song to like as a, as i'm listening to i'm like it's so weird that this is popular right now like there's right. like adults you know singing along to the i think it was playing during the football game i was at i was at a football oh i'm game, sure I'm and they sure. had it on and i was like i can't believe this is like a new song i don't know yeah it's, um, it's the best wait so you're you're a big football fan yeah are you a bear i like fan? football so i just went to chicago my brother's one of the coaches for the team oh so shit. i just got back today and oh, shit. it was a okay. brutal loss on yeah Sunday. what the hell my crushed. husband's a patriots fan i'm a uh, unfortunately, until this year, a Washington Commanders fan. Very okay. deeply. I love them. And uh, yeah, this is a I, fun season. For this you. is finally for once in my goddamn life. It's right. a good season. Well, it's funny. <laughs> every with the... stat. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Every stat is like uh, they haven't done this since I was five years old. Like right. for real. It's well, like so fun. That's the funny part about the Commanders is they have this history that is like within earshot. Like it seems yeah. like. You know, they were very successful in the 90s, and then since then, nothing. And, you know, as I'm a Patriots fan myself, but, like, because of my brother, kind of kind of moved with him. But, you know, the Patriots had their huge run, and now you're like, man, you really hope you don't become this, like, commanders, like, where you're, like, kids are like, I used to hear of this great yeah, team, like you know, like, yeah. and now you're having... But then, but that's the fun of sports is, like... Best. It goes away, then finally it comes back, and you were there the whole time, and now you're getting to live out this fun season, which is it's great. It's truly the best, and all every single one of my friends is like a housewife's girl, or you know, and and I'm like, uh, I get that drama mm. watching football. I really do because I really care about it, and I've I've watched it since I was a child. So it's like right. I don't know. I have the history of it. I really I love. And you it probably so much. have your people that you go to, like I that like you talk about with this specifically, like it's community baby. Right. And I <laughs> I was thinking about that with the college football. Like there was this assumption that a bigger playoff would make the regular season not as good. And I'm like, no, it makes it even better. I can like keep up with my friends more. Like the season's yeah. still at stake. Like Penn yeah. State lost, but we're still in it. So let's go to the special. The special is called White Noise. It's on YouTube. Yes. Everyone needs yes. to go watch it. It's yes. hilarious. So funny. Um, I was watching clips from it just before we started taping here. Um, what is I, I, I like asking people. I think when you're promoting a special, it's like, OK, you tell us about it. And it's like you, you end up saying the same thing every time. Yeah, I think. I like asking people, what's a joke you wish you had more time to work on? Oh, God. Because I think every comedian, the problem with the special is like, it's a period on the end of the sentence that generally you don't get with stand up. Stand up, you're like always like tinkering. It's like an old car that you're working on. And then finally, someone's like, we're selling the car. And you're like, I got a month to go. <laughs> you know, like, and you're like, but what about the carburetor? You're like, you know, like, and, and finally you start actually working on it. And, you know, it goes from this fun thing you tinker with to this like, oh, my God, 
I have to like let go of these jokes. Yeah, dude. So is there one that you're like, man, that's the one that is a little bit. Yes. Lucy Goosey and I wish I had more time. What would that one yes, be? Yes, that's such a good question. And put a pin in this, but I loved your special and I had a question Thank about you. it. But um, yeah, so this was my first one. So I've done comedy like 13 years and mm-hmm. it just felt like um, I had to, I'm like, I have to, I need like to release something uh, to feel free again, if that right. makes sense. Because you are just constantly tinkering. And and I'm, I was talking to, I opened for Anthony DeVito last night and I was talking to him and I was like, dude, like this is the best I felt because it's like this freedom and I feel totally creative. But because of that, I've written things for those jokes that I'm like, why isn't that in the special? Right, <laughs> like so right. some, well, there, a bunch of good shit came out right after I like finished. I was like, fuck. Yeah. But, That's um, the story. I remember I taped mine and then the next day I was in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I'm like, I'm like, man, I said it here better than I said it on the special. And and Okay, you know that, you have to, and that's why you have to let go of it because you're like, I gotta move on. I I can't exactly keep. Well, that's kind of what I was gonna ask you. I'll come back because I do have an mm-hmm. answer for your question, but I was gonna ask you. You've always been great. I've always loved your comedy. The and you feel seem very confident. When I had to watch my special over and over again, I was like, Oh, I'm the worst comedian. Oh, you can't ever do it. You I can't it do is, it. Well, I was like, did you go through that? And you <clears throat> also, it was on Netflix. So it was like, I'm sure you felt this pressure too. No, well, it got, I made it myself and then it got sold after. Okay, so I see. Okay, had, okay. When I was editing it, it's it's horrible. And I, to me, like, I can't watch it. Like, I oh, would go. so bad. I would let, I would, I would kind of like trust the people who were editing it. And then I was like, come back to me later in the process. Like, I'd rather look at it late then look at it. You know, some people, everyone's different. Some people are like involved in every second of everything. And I'm like, I did it. Nah, this dude. is it. I, you know, <laughs> I, I had my time to work way on too it. Much. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'd be sitting there wondering, yeah, like just why, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know. I think it's, um, it wasn't, wor- you know, maybe if I had spent more time editing it, it'd be like, you know, shorter and more tight. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. I've yeah. never been tight. You know, yeah, so like, yeah, why same, would I be something same. I'm not? You know, I'm a, so, I'm a vibe, baby. Right. I'm a vibe. <laughs> Get involved. Have fun yeah, with it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know. It's um, it is interesting. You know, when you say that we as comics, we our world is being infiltrated by marketing people. Oh, babe. Yeah, and and w- that's that could sound mean it's meant to sound mean it is people yes. who are doing comedy that should be head of marketing at a corporation yeah because man. most re- you know the every comic i've met that i've enjoyed hanging out with and enjoyed watching on stage they're not really like a business person you know getting out the reports good with due dates good with algorithms editing, right algorithms and stuff like that so like and like listen those people exist but not on on mass the way we're seeing it now where it's like right. you you know the and i had a friend who just saw anthony open for uh oh, mark norman. norman yeah in chicago yeah mark's fantastic mark yeah. is so funny this so isn't funny. A, a comparison thing i hope it doesn't sound that way but like my friend and i hope this doesn't sound bad to anybody because my f- friend from high school was at the show he goes anthony is so funny yeah, he, and it, i'm like ugh. And I'm like, yeah, I go, this isn't a surprise to me. I, I don't know why I'm apologizing. This None of this is mean in any way. No. But I, I'm i like, Anthony's fucking great. He's like, I, he's like the whole time I'm like, where's this guy been? I'm like, exactly. Anthony's been being a comic, you know, not like, a marketing wh- person. You know, getting like, better, and, getting funnier, working you know, the right. road, working every place in the cut. It's so real. That's so, you know, real. like him, like Greg Stone. There's like all these people that when I like had already been doing it when I started and, and you too, like uh, I'm a few years younger than you, but I remember watching you guys at like the Creek and shit and being like, these, these, people are meant to be gone. <laughs> like you were like gods <laughs> to me. Kind. And, and, and now I'm like, fuck if like it is, cause you can be negative about it. You can be like, Oh, like if Anthony is not uh, headlining theaters, then what the fuck am I even trying to do? Cause he's right. so good. Uh, but it's also like, um, comedy I, i've also i think all of us have been doing it long enough we've watched different waves and eras of right. comedy as well so you're like it's all gonna come back around 
people are going to realize that these people they follow are shitty and can only do one thing and they're hot that's cool i love hot people right. <laughs> right. I, you know I, but it's like <laughs> it's not stand-up comedy and i really truly love stand-up comedy so. i know and i think that's the thing is like if you go to a show the fear is that like it just turns someone off to stand up they go i went to that show and it was fine or their friend you know the, the the worst thing you can do is bring a friend and then the friend goes looks at you and is like <laughs> yeah. what did you bring me to you wasted yeah. my money now you're embarrassed to even be a fan of this person anymore yeah i don't know it's all and it's like we spend we physically are like exhausted by going on stage i was just thinking today i was like man i have so much to do that doesn't involve me posting you know like yeah. like the fact that like that's a part of my life is yeah. is hard something i admit to you have to do it yeah but it's also you're so good at it it's so I, I, it's kind of nice to hear you say it because i'm like oh i feel like shit but you seem like this is easy for me and i'm like no. i'm over here like oh what a dumb idiot and why does my face look like that <laughs> is that Listen, what my that, voice sounds like <laughs> right who am i what am i doing someone was like showing me like this guy they follow and i'm like he seems great and they're like they do what you do i'm like I guess I, I uh, you have to just kind of like get <laughs> yeah. past all this like Truly. negative thought and yeah you know yeah. but it's um you know yeah. getting good at stand up takes a lot of time and effort and again like the way we're talking about your special where it's like I had a bit I had to put it up and it's just that's it so, that's the so, it's it's in ink you know so you want to like, know the bit yeah what's so, the bit okay so I I'm I said I'm from Virginia I'm from Virginia mm. so and I'm white ladies and gentlemen mm. if you're not watching on YouTube and so my <laughs> parents voted for Trump <laughs> okay and um I hate that <laughs> and that and I'm you know if your listeners like that that's great I don't like that <laughs> and it's it's and I know that like we're in this such you know there it's so emotional right and I think that's why I can never uh nail it exactly so like in the special i because you know i have to do very rural areas i do uh you know just sh shitty venues and, and where every it's a mixed crowd or is a right wing or is you know and uh <laughs> so i kind of both sides it a little bit i make fun of everybody and i mm. liked that and i was happy with that and after this like uh, when I filmed it, Joe Biden was still the Democratic candidate. So we kind of had to edit things really tight in order for you to not to realize that. Mm -hmm. So so that was kind of tough. And but I really wanted to address the election. And I, I so badly wanted to get across that, like the emotional part of it, that like I have fought for hours with my family and right. both of us have just leaned further in, you know, and. And it's so frustrating, but you like, I love my family. I get along right. with my family. We have a great relationship. We, we talk football. Thank God for football. Otherwise, what the fuck would we mm -hmm. talk about? But right. like, you know, it's like, I love them. I love being around them, but it's like, uh, that I, everybody's feeling that right now. Right. And everybody's feeling that. And I wanted to feel more emotional. And just now the last few weeks, I've kind of I think I saw the writing on the wall and now especially that he's won even of this week I've like kind of cracked open some things and I think that now that the election's over the tension has been released a bit mm -hmm. and it's just like we're sitting in the reality that he won and I've been able to be more emotional about it so I'm like all right hopefully it makes the next special or like the idea of it at least makes the next special of like loving the people who you are so mad at and feel right. so polarized from but i don't know that's that's really what especially when we were like trying to get it out for the election and editing those election clips first and i was like i'm happy with these jokes they're funny i know they work in any kind of area but i also was like oh it's not telling how i actually feel right now because i feel so complicated you know Especially I mean? considering the timing of it coming out. And exactly. I'm sure, you know, and I think that's going to be powerful, especially if anyone's listening right now who loves their family and disagrees with their family. Like, that's a what a special for them to have access yeah. to. Like, yeah. to hear that that's a normal thing. And it's way more normal than people even talk about. You go to, like, your echo chambers and you only talk to the people 
you know and the people you agree with and then the only people you disagree with are you see them online they're like these crazy people (laughs) you know like and that's spoken for all sides of the too much of the coin it's like (laughs) people i agree with and the craziest person cartoonish person when it's like most likely your mom and dad your sister your brother you know these are people you deal with and there and you go and you know oh my mom and dad they're not the crazy one i saw on tiktok but you're like mad that they're holding hands with the crazy person you saw on tiktok and you're like give a fuck who wears a dress but (laughs) they like have a small business you know so i'm like oh this is like but you also are voting for the people who wear dresses you know it's 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 really frustrating it's a frustrating but i'm I'm sure someone will be happy to see you dealing with it like you know and again what you're saying is i'm telling a story at my show that happened in 2018 you know like and i remember trying the story in kind of in between jokes I knew worked and like seeing, you know, throw a little shit against the wall. Sure. And it would make people sad. And I'm like, and then it took like, you know, and you go, just like you said, like emotionally, like where was I to tell it? Mm -hmm. Or was I too angry at the story or was I not the right place to like understand the angle that's fun from this story? hundred percent. You know, there is a fun angle to, my parents vote differently than me. Yeah, my kids yeah. vote differently than me. Whatever, it, there is a fun angle. And right now, someone's sitting there, like maybe upset and going through this. And you know, you're they're gonna find you're gonna find it along the way. Like maybe a year, or two years later, you. Someone once said to me, they're like, sometimes there's a joke you're just not ready to tell. Yeah, and yeah. It makes it's a lot real. of sense to me. Like I, you know, I um, I think with relationships, when people do relationship jokes. If you're going to talk about a past relationship, like if you get into it right away, you're like just slamming on someone. It's not oh, really yeah. reflective, you know, like yeah. if you give it a few years, you go, oh, I was in that relationship and that's the person I was. And now you're like, oh, now you're kind of making fun of yourself. It, more. Well, that that's exact. That hits on something exactly that I love in comedy, because I feel like when I was growing up watching comedy, a lot of it was like, look at these people. Look how stupid these people right. are. And when comedy sort of shifted a little bit, I was like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I was right. like, that I'm is when dummy. I was like oh this is perfect because it right. because because we're all fucking stupid we're all, right. all idiots we all make mistakes like yes exactly and and i feel like that uh vulnerability is always what makes the best comedians absolutely so okay your favorite joke of the special and it's <gasps> called white noise it's on youtube right now everyone should go follow courtney at court mcginnis on yeah. instagram go follow you can yeah. go watch all the clips and then go watch it on youtube What's yeah. your favorite uh, joke? Ooh, that's such a good question. Okay, um, my favorite joke, and I'm and I, you know, I'm sad to retire her, but uh, people on the road are still gonna hear it. <laughs> my favorite okay. joke is um, uh, that uh, I was like, I hate my phone. I hate my phone. Every time mm-hmm. I touch my phone, I feel worse. Every time I open Instagram, I'm like, great, I'm not hot. And then I open right. Twitter, which, by the way, I won't call X. Uh, I open Twitter <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not smart. And then I go, but then you open Facebook. You're like, well, I'm doing OK. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because it's true because and it's not even I don't think like my best joke, but I'm like every time I open Facebook, it is like, what? happened like it is the wild it is is wild because you're because we're similar age so like when we had facebook it was only for college kids and then i don't know what hell like seventh circle of hell facebook has become but every time i open it it's like an explosion on my phone it's so fucked it's crazy and my parent i remember a few years ago my and i wasn't going on facebook a lot like i used you know i my dad was like, you know, people are on Facebook. People are on Facebook. You should be posting there. Right, which we and should. I, I never even thought of it. Then I get told, and then like a social media, I hire a social media company. They're like, we got to get your Facebook up. That's where like you can really find an audience. I'm like, what? And then like <laughs> I started, um, so I switched mine to like, a, so I have my regular Facebook and then I have like a, f- a fan. I just did follow. that. I so, just did that, yeah. So like I'll go back and forth between the two. So you go to the my regular Facebook, like people come up that I'm like, who are these people? Oh, my God. I remember meeting them then. And I remember that person from college. I'm like, yeah, it's like going to like, uh, you know, like this weird time capsule. Yeah. You're like, I fucked that guy. (laughs) You're like, whoa, (laughs) where did they come from? Right. And 
Um, and then you're seeing these people that you recognize and they're with their family and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, and then I go back to like the, the fan account or whatever. And I post like stuff there and so, now things are starting to like get traction there. Like I'm starting yeah. to have like videos like do pretty well there. And I'm like, the comments I get are like, actually some of the most absurd wild comments that i've ever seen like i'm like they're like full dissertations it's like someone wrote a thousand words under like <laughs> i just can't believe it and i'm like i don't kind of love it but it also is like i need to be in the right headspace because it is right fucking insane it is a it's sweet insane. form of insanity like you know tiktok they're like zoned in they know exactly yeah. what you're talking about they're like TikTok, they'll, yeah. they'll say mean things to you but like at least yeah. they're following the narrative <laughs> Fa facebook it'll be like like it just is so far away from the original point of what was written or done. Oh, I'm like, God. it's like crazy. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you're like going through it and you're just doom scrolling and you get in the comment section and you just keep watching replies and you keep looking at the spiral. Right. And then you're like, wait, I'm engaging in this. It's like, it's just, it's <clears throat> I'm so in. Yeah. Wild. It's like so parts of Facebook are like, oh, I think this also might be what the dark web looks like. It's just right. so fucked up. It is. It, and it's so interesting too how they are all taking on their own personalities. Like, yeah, Facebook feels a little bit more like hometown shit. TikTok exactly. feels like this like national like we're gonna like crush you area like on a national scale. <laughs> yeah. Instagram feels like people I know a little bit more. Like I'm like I just that like is... I'm familiar with who's in there. I don't know. It's, it's um t uh, Instagram people are nicer. And they seem I, nicer. They Maybe seem it's... nicer. And for, ge this is generally speaking, and this is my yeah. very female centric algorithm, but um, they're generally nicer if I post things on Instagram because you're right. I think people are more engaged and they're more like they know you or saw you or saw me on this pod or, or you know, it's right. like more adjacent. So they're not going to be like, kill yourself. They're going right. to be like, love you, girl. <laughs> you know, it's like so nice. Right. TikTok is more like, I can't believe you as a man would even, <laughs> you know, like it's like it feels just so much more monumental, like yeah. the, the way they want me to like be crushed. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I it's all See, a weird I, landscape. We're going to find I, out years from now. This is like the the worst thing we could have done for our brains what were you saying i'm sorry 100 100 no 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 i was just saying i got my first not funny on my youtube special and i was like mm. this honestly feels kind of good it feels like <laughs> you made it enough people have watched it that, that the haters are coming well, <laughs> it's they, very exciting <laughs> they the real sad part is if you get no hate you have made no impact what and like Say that again, because just, you, like that's crazy. It's crazy. Hate is actually like you have to appreciate that someone doesn't like it. Because I had someone comment on my thing once. Oh, no. They were so they were like, this isn't funny. It was just that. And I just wrote back. I go, the weird irony of it is that <laughs> someone found this video so funny that it's the only way it got to you, you to make it to say it was not funny. And Preach, it's like, bitch. Preach. right. And like, this is all like self talk, like, very like therapy speak. Like, if you once you start needing to be like the good and the bad are all equal, it's just fuel yeah. to get your stuff out yeah. there. You're, you're, you're so far down the river of like, we're fucked up. Yeah. But like, it is true. It's sadly true. Like, if all I hear is good, then the video did nothing. It didn't yeah. help. Yeah. And it's crazy. I, it's crazy. And it's like, and I, I wonder if like, you know, it's I, I always wonder, do these people like I would love to like sit with someone who's like who's written negative things on a video like to be it. you like that would really be like I have dreams of like sitting with that person going, do you know that like you're the re I need you. You're just fossil fuel <laughs> yeah, to me. Yeah. I, if you don't exist, that doesn't go make the video go. Yeah, like, you guys you are like scorned you... lovers. <laughs> right. It's it, and it's like you. It's just all crazy. But they need you. They need you too. It's the balance of the universe. They need Batman to hate the something yeah. to feel better about themselves. And it's Aye. very, very fascinating. Uh, five years ago, I could not have released a special because I needed to like mentally get to a place where I'm like, you know what? I could use some hate. You know, right. let's get a little heat <laughs> going. Let's get a little well, heat. <laughs> listen, everyone, go love Courtney McGinnis's special right now so that someone hates it. Um, 
and it's at Court McGinnis on Instagram. The the special's called White Noise. It's on YouTube. The link to the YouTube special will be in the description of today's episode, so you can go watch it immediately, save it, and, you know, flag it for whenever you're having a <laughs> night on the couch or a date night. Courtney, this is fantastic. Thank oh, you so much. I love you, Jared. You're seriously one of my faves. Thank you so uh, much for having me. I love it. I can't wait to text my cousins. This is going to rule. <laughs> you're way Thanksgiving too is going to rule. <laughs> you're, you're all set. You got it. You can be at the kids table. You don't have to yeah, deal with your parents and all they're that. They're not going to be like, so. how's your career? <laughs> right. No. Go ask cousin Betty. They'll yeah, tell you how great exactly. I'm doing. I was on the J train. So thank you so much. Thank uh, we'll you. be back next you, week. Boom. Boom.